Hi, I'm Chris, I like to paint things, and I recently received a physical copy of a game called Space Station Zero. Space Station Zero is a miniatures agnostic skirmish game that takes you and a custom crew through the depths of an unforgiving space station. The brainchild of Snarling Badger Studios, that's uh, Uncle Adam and Vince Ventruella, Space Station Zero lets you create a crew um, to plunder through the depths of a space station, collecting uh, gear, fighting an AI, you know, battling mutants, solving puzzles. All in all, it sounds right up my alley. Now, I'm going to play this game later this week with my brother, so I'm going to have to build a crew. Luckily, this game lets you design any sort of crew that you want, so I'm going to use a box of Euclidean Star Striders recently re-released from Games Workshop. We're going to build a team of Imperial Navy Voidsmen and send them into the fray. After I had everybody built, I put them on my famous coffee lid using some sticky tack. We're going to start off with the uh, Imperial Navy Voidsmen. I'm kind of liking the idea of an Imperial Navy. So we're going to take them outside, give them an all over spray of black primer. Followed by an all over spray of gray primer. This top-down gray primer is going to help me kind of figure out where the details are, get a good assessment for the light, whether or not it stays in the final um, paint scheme, you know, that doesn't really matter. But since we're going to make an Imperial Navy, I'm going to base them off this uh, Psyker I made using sort of navy colors. I like the idea of a cool little navy, you know, retinue, uh, just a team of weirdos to send into the space station. We're going to go for a... Uh, Darker blue, some copper, some gold, leather, white, plate mail, that sort of thing to create um, our navy color scheme. First thing, for some reason we're not going to do skin first, we're going to start with a base coat of our Cantor blue over all of the cloth of the coat. And really not worrying about being neat, it's mostly just to get good coverage on everything, um, get our, you know, our base sort of set. And this definitely required two coats. Um, there's a lot of weird cracks and crevices on these guys. But again, we can be messy. It's not really the end of the world, which is always helpful. Next, we're going to come in with uh, our copper color, uh, Balthazar Gold, off the top of my head. I'll fill that in if that's wrong. Uh, and we're going to line the trim, which is obviously GW kind of knows how to help painters and their sculpts. Um, the, the details were raised super nicely. This is extremely easy to do. And then we're going to line all the armor, the shoulder pads, everything like that. And now you can sort of see where I'm going with this paint scheme. I mean, you could just pop these two colors on. They realistically understand, you know, call it there. But we're not going to do that. So we've got uh, our silver metallic color laid down. I'm kind of doing a bit of pre, um, not shading, a bit of pre like detail work because we're gonna shade this all with a sepia tone. So it's nice to get some some differentiation and all of that metal. I also opted for some odd reason not to do the knee pads in the same uh, copper color. So we're gonna line them silver. I'm pretty sure later down the road, I literally go in and fill those in with silver. Next, we're gonna do rough iron on most of the other black elements other than the gun, like our grenades, our ammo uh, pouches, just again, more metallics to kind of break things up. 
give us something, you know, that isn't black and a little more interesting to look at. And, you know, make differences and gaps between the metals and the other solid colors. Rough iron's a good color for that, though I've not really figured out the best way to highlight it. So, you know. Next is one of the worst golds ever produced. It's auric armor gold. It's a nice color, but God for the life of me, I have not found a good gold that works for anything. Especially, especially this. Even over silver. Apparently common wisdom now is to mix your own gold, but I just, I just can't be asked to do that. So we slather this in two really thin coats over all of the Aquilas on everything. Just some minor details here and there. And bullets, obviously. I think this dude is the only guy who has bullets, so uh, we gotta fill those out, man. Break up those colors. Next, we're gonna take our favorite leather skin tone, Auburn Shadow. We're gonna fill in all of the leather straps and everything, and then I'm gonna use this mixed with my flesh tones to attempt to reach into all of the bits of flesh and kind of flush it out. was a massive pain. I should have done this first, but I was not feeling it the day I put the base coats down. So every single one of these Star Striders, thankfully, has, you know, their own unique details, some extra bits and bobs, and we gotta take care of those next. Our lead that we've been painting most of the video needs hair. I, I uh, changed her skin tone a little bit. I was unhappy with it the first time around, and I'm opting for a um, blonde hair to kind of break that up. Now, the dark skin and the blonde hair, I think, is kind of a cool contrast, and it gives it a, a nice little pop. We also had to knock in all of these uh, chin straps and um, chin strap beards that I know these guys got. Cigar ash. That's kind of a fun thing to add. Beyond that, we need um, you know, knock out the beards, get them nice and colored up. We're going for a uh, old grizzled veteran look on this guy. And I was actually very happy with the consistency of this paint to make the back of his hair. And on this guy, we're going to try really hard to give him a sweet 80s mustache to mixed effects. I mean, you can't really see it down the road, but we both know it's there. And we have to use this uh, step to tidy everything up. Like, re-go over all the blue, fix all the copper trim, that sort of thing. Next, we're going to do washes. As always, I do a big mix of Seraphim Sepia, Nuln Oil, and some Arby Painter Strong Tone. We're going to go Nuln Oil over all of the black and all of the gray to give us a nice base for our shadow color. And obviously over all of the metallics as well. Then we're going to do Sepia on the uh, copper to just keep it really nice and vibrant but give it some shading. And obviously yellow, some of the details that kind of deserve it. And I really like the way this looks. And then we go with our strong tone over all the leather to further differentiate those two types of brown. And I think that adds, you know, varying degrees of darker tones. And I think we're gonna use, I think we use dark tone again on 
all of the skin to tie them all together, even though they all have their own uh, unique skin tones. Now everyone's favorite step, highlighting. I use a weird army painter color hawk turquoise because I just do not feel like highlighting up these cloaks that much. I'm just doing a couple bits here and there to break them up. Um, give them a sense of highlighting, cut, catch the, uh, the rough edges, but I really, really don't want to do hours and hours of layering up this blue. Plus I haven't found a good blue to highlight cancer blue with. Then we're gonna re-go over all of our silver we established earlier on the copper uh, trim. This just gives us some added depth and better coverage on all of those pieces. I definitely was fighting my brush this day, so there's a lot of mistakes that I had to clean up later. Now for the lenses, I started, I didn't really know what to do with this if I'm being honest. I started painting by painting them uh, with the silver color and then using our Bad Boon Yellow Contrast paint that I haven't found the best use for. But it gives us kind of nice green, weird green look for the lenses. And then we're going to go, you know, obviously clean up that overspill. And after that was dry, I give, gave it a little bit of sepia wash to kind of you know, change the corners, make the corners a little bit richer in tone. But then, I kind of thought, it actually looks better if you cover the entire lens in sepia. It's hard to see on this one, I definitely went back and fixed her, but, um, but I, after about two coats it ends up looking good. I put a little dot for the light, I think I misplaced it, but ah, they look good now. That's our Imperial uh, Voidsman done. For the basing, I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to keep them on my, uh, you know, basic uh, red baking soda bases like all my Skatari. These guys are going to be in a space station, and I need to make them wading through industrial ruins as such. So I very uncarefully separated from their bases, almost ruining them in the process, so that we can build some fancy bases out of scraps I've got laying around. I've got old toys, ad mech bits, wires, just a big box of junk from my uh, from an old uh, installation job I used to have. Not a bad haul to have, but obviously, you know, like anyone in this hobby, I'm a bit of a hoarder. So I start by breaking up some toys and getting little plastic gubbins and, you know, metal looking bits, cor corroded nonsense, taking baking soda and super glue and PVA glue and all that sort of stuff. Just kind of, you know, building, going with the flow, mostly having fun. After all that was dry, I doused the whole thing in some watered down PVA glue just to keep it all uh, set. And this was a very messy process, 
And I honestly, I didn't care. I wasn't really worried about it. I just needed to seal everything in. First, everything's gonna get a healthy dry brush of a darker bolt gun metal color. And then we're gonna go in with a brighter metal and just pick out a few things, you know, break up the metal, get some differentiation going on. And then get some of our copper color back out, do some cables. And then we're also gonna paint some cable uh, conduit. We're gonna do mostly blue because it'll be a nice um, tie with the model back into the scenery and it also just stands out it's really nice I also did some red conduits and yellow conduits most of these are just toothpicks but a couple of them are actual wires and scrap wires and things that I had laying around I also have these plastic hard tiles I have on most of the bases we're gonna paint those with some really thin uh, whitish gray to kind of look like a space station floor I also have a very unfortunately colored brown called Ruddy Flesh that we're going to go in and paint all of the dirt around everything, kind of dirty everything up, just splashing around, but did not like that color too much, so we're going to mix it up with some weird brown I've never heard of that I got on sale at my local hobby shop, kind of add some layers to the mud, make it look a little less uh, wet, <laughs> I suppose, and then we're going to obviously shade it with some Null Oil and some Strong Tone on the metals and the uh, dirt to tie it all together, give it that shadow, and leave them to dry. For the officer, I was thankfully uh, sensible enough to start with the skin. We're going to go for a slightly different um, finish on him. We're going to use some dark blue gray, which is really just, you know, dark gray. It's kind of what it says on the tan, which is nice. We're going to go over the entire coat with this color. And we're going to do our pants in the same uh, light gray color as the rest of our uh, voidsmen. And we're going to have um, some matching hair, because why not? I was super messy with this for absolutely no reason, but I'm pretty sure I'd come back and fix it later. And then we use a really dark black on the shoes, give them some nice, smart, uh, officer-looking shoes. Also blacked out the guns and anywhere we were going to have any metal. doodle bopper on his back, uh, these cables, at least a pistol, the other one I believe is going to stay a shotgun. Then we're going to give him a nice red stripe for an accent color. Did a small bit of glazing on this, but nothing crazy. Then we're going to do the trim in the exact same color as the rest of our guys to tie them all together. But it'll come out looking a little bit differently over the gray than over blue. For some reason, this was super watered down and required two coats, which was annoying. But it came out nice in the end. It made it a little more solid looking. Used the same color to accent over the red, which actually came out nice and striking and I was worried it was going to be too similar of a tone but it ended up looking really nice. And then we're going to fill in the armor much the same and again I have no idea why this one was so watery today. Last time I got almost perfect coverage on one coat when I guess you know two thin coats is what they recommend anyway. Next we're going to use our normal weather color to paint in his shotgun which I like the idea of keeping as like a brown color, even though it's the same as the rest of the leather on him, because it'll tie all the colors on the model together, and it'll look wood, which is an interesting thing to have, I feel like, in whatever time frame uh, Space Station Zero takes place. 
And then, I mean, this miniature only took me maybe two hours. Next, we have to do something I've never done before, paint a dog. First step is to decide uh, what breed he's going to be, and my wife suggested Doberman Pinscher. Especially this Doberman Pinscher. To get a nice Doberman, we're going to start with the same colors are off, so actually a dark blue-gray, which felt a little bit on the lighter side even after two coats, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, shade it down and it'll kind of work out. But I ended up definitely adding a little bit of black to it just to make it work, but we still need to start with gray to have a place to go. Then I added some brown in the spots on my reference picture, you know, the paws and the snout. The brown kind of goes up on the insides of the legs, which I think really helps sell the realism a little bit. This was just an experiment and it's a dog, so it's always going to look great. Even got the inside of his ears, and again, not perfect. I don't think he looks like fur at the end, but I think he still looks good. And then we have to give him a uniform. So we do the same blue for his cool little cloak, cape, dog clothes thing. Then he has the same copper color on all of the trim. His weird little Superman cape thing symbol that I, I just could not figure out where this thing began and ended and I had the box in front of me and just never bothered to use it but we did all the trim of that we hit him with some leather on all of his little straps and dotted some silver on all the little marks and couples and buckles and even did a little uh, light bit of trim on the um, on the copper trim we did before Next, I had to try and get the eyes. This went really well for one, and not for the other. Look at the, oh, terrible. But luckily, I did it on the second try, and just kind of went over them using our original dark blue-gray color. <laughs> they look fine, I guess. Then we're gonna hit them with some Nuln Oil straight out of the pot and all of those rippling dog muscles just pop out. It's gonna tone down the color a little and hopefully, you know, bring out that Doberman Black. Um, it looks a little splotchy going on, but luckily his, uh, luckily his kind of natural sculpt um, works well with the wash and it really gives it a good feel to the, you know, light and dark. It seeps in all the recesses, comes out looking really nice. Finally, I did a few things just to sort of make everything look nicer, in my opinion. I thought that all of the um, pieces on the basis were too separate, too independent. So I gave everything an all-over dry brush of an off-white, almost light brown color to really tie everything together, make it look dusty and worn, and not just a bunch of pieces glued together. Speaking of glue, though, then I had to glue on our, our uh, voidsman, but I didn't want to glue paint to paint. So I had to mark out where they would stand, give a little cut into the paint job I just finished, scrape all that away, and dot some super glue to hold our uh, voidsman in place permanently. 
And no, I never bothered fixing that foot. Just didn't care. I can't lie. There we go. Perfect. And then we finish up by lining the base rims with two coats of black paint, as is tradition. Leaving us with this. Alright, now we have to build our crew. I went with a warship, obviously this is the Imperium we're talking about, commanded by Shipmaster Elias. He is a warmaster with a sidearm and an energy melee weapon to represent his shotgun at close range. Then we have Lieutenant Conrad Valdermalk. Uh, he is hard to kill. He's our veteran soldier with an armor jacket and an energy missile and a dog friend that I haven't specced out yet. Sergeant Hans Grohill, he's a regular soldier, combat specialist with a regular energy missile weapon. And our star of the show, Sergeant Faye Debordal, she's a pilot giving her the ability awareness, and I gave her a scanner and a missile weapon. And finally we have our engineer, gun captain Gregor Norbo. He gets weapon tuning, a kinetic, ja or a kinetic missile, and an armored jacket. I also painted up this thing, a Xenos doctor, kinda rad. And I have a couple more people to paint so I can kind of mix and match, build crews using Necrons as androids, cyborgs, and we have a collection of mutants. <laughs> 